Good afternoon. How y'all doing? Uh, glad to be back here again uh, after a nice little bye day or bye week, however you want to say it. But uh, I think uh, glad to be back on the field. Our guys are ready uh, to go against the Florida Gators, which we all know is a team that never never lacks talent. Uh, they're coming to Columbia, so excited about the matchup. Uh, our guys are still in love with the process. They, the whole goal is to stay in love with the process, understanding seven game stretch, one game at a time. With that, with that being said, any questions? Clayton, you mentioned a lot about TFLs uh, through these first five games, wanting yep. to get more of them. How do you emphasize that in yep. practice? Did you have to change something major? Did you, did you have to put in another drill to say, this is what we've got to do to get TFLs? Well, right now it's coming down. You know, we, we missed some tackles. We lost lost some con uh, some contain on some things that would have been second so TFLs. Uh, we'll make sure we're making those opportunities, as Coach uh, Robinson would say, make those layups when they get there. So we missed some of those, so we emphasize that. And obviously, making sure we uh, I'm calling the right plays at the right time when this when the TFLs you have a chance, and um, obviously passing downs and you know possible some short yardage stuff. And you, sometimes you can't get too greedy as well. That's what happened on the on the uh, fourth and the third and one that popped. We try tried to make a call that that a TFL call, and then went too far and we got too aggressive and it popped and. They know we're chasing it, so you got to. You got to. It's all about timing and make the layups. Clayton, you've talked a lot about improving the run and, and yep. being more efficient against it through yep. five games. How do you feel like that's gone, and, and what's next for this group to be even better or continue to improve in that aspect? I mean, obviously, you know that's one thing that we know in this league. You have to be able to stop the ball when you know they're running it. Um, obviously, you know inconsistency right now is the main thing with that. Is be more consistent. You can't have, you know. 37 good run fits and then four bad ones. That, you know, it'll be 200 yards before you know it in this league, but the backs that we face and the quarterback run game itself. Uh, some scrambles have gotten out for extra 20 plus yards on a couple games in quarterbacks. After you watch all that stuff during the bye week, you realize that, you know, sometimes it, feel, it feels really bad, but you're really not that, not that far off from being solid and being consistent. I think that's the main thing. And just really pointing out you know, the mistakes that, that, that we're making, sometimes to uh, make sure we have a good edge, make sure we have our gap secure, make sure we're in our gap when don't get, you know, blocked by the close receiver. Little things like that you got to teach the guys. And, I mean, it's a lot of teaching going on, especially with the, the youth that we have on defense. But just, you know, and offenses are smart. They find the young players and they try to put them in conflict situations. And guys are still making plays. But, you know, a, a simple alignment by a receiver can put a young guy in a conflict on – what to do. But those are the things that we've been teaching, just making sure that we're seeing those little details that's going to help. Instead of an eight-yard run, that's a two-yard run. And that, if that happens four times, you've already saved 20 yards off your off the day. Uh, you just used the word details there. Yep. Shane talked about that a lot of go, going into the bye in yesterday. In your mind, what does detail-oriented football look like, and how do you kind of go about getting that better during a bye week? Uh, detail-oriented football is an example of, you know, you are, you are free safety to the boundary and the tight ends on the ball and you have him man, you have to look out there and see if the receiver is two yards inside the numbers or one yard inside the numbers. That's a big difference. If he's one yard inside the numbers, he's probably blocking the corner. If he's two yards, he's probably blocking you. So that means your, your alignment can't be at eight, you got to be at four. That's a detailed thing. Um, another one will be uh, a defensive end. If you're the defensive end away from the back and the back is two yards behind the quarterback, he's probably running inside. So you could tighten up and play the tackle. If he's up closer, it could be a pass or it could be an outside run. So just an alert, things like that. So I can go on and on and on. You want more? But uh, th that's what I mean. It's, it's definitely not big picture stuff. It's very, very, very detailed. Yeah, going off with it, just the technique, you're talking about a lot of the pre-snap stuff. We talk about the explosive plays. I know it's real easy just to look at the secondary, but obviously I'm sure as you would tell people, it starts with everyone up front making sure they're doing their assignments too. When you've gone back and reevaluated that during the bye week, trying to limit the explosive plays, how much of that is, whether it be, you know, technique and just being able to clean certain things up? Like, how would you, you know, kind of talk about what you've been able to notice yep. over the last couple of weeks by taking a step back? Yep. A lot of times, if you can just keep coaching the heck out of it, you know what I mean? And they, ev they eventually get it. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's over a long period of time for certain kids. Every kid is different, but you have to keep coaching the heck out of it. And you got to find a way to, to coach it to the point to where it clicks. And you can look in their eyes and tell when it clicks. And then you got to drill it. You got to drill it. You got to drill it. And the big plays that we've given up, sometimes it's, it's, it's a competitive catch or a guy breaks a tackle and, and breaks for 25. But half, the t half, half of those, we really feel like that if we would have made a better step here, a better read here, got our leverage and kept our leverage here, that's a four-yard gain versus a 17-yard run. 
And so a lot of it's fixable. A lot of it has to get fixed. And it starts with us as coaches just continuing and believing the process and not giving up and standing in the fight and, and understanding that, you know, it's hard out there for those guys. And so we got to just keep putting them in situations to, to improve. When you've gone back to reevaluate things over the bye week, what are, what are a couple of things that you've been most pleased with uh, amongst the group as a whole? Uh, to me, it's like just when you're watching it, uh, the, the, the good thing, the good and the bad thing about bye weeks, you, lo you look at the stuff that's good. It's not all, you don't look at all the stuff that's bad. You know what I mean? So when you see the things that are good and that makes you feel really good, like I mean, there's, you know, there's obviously been a couple of games where we've been good against a run against good teams. And, and you put that, you put that tape on, you're like, look, we can do it. We can, you know, obviously then you find a play where it didn't work. So you got to kind of have a happy balance as a coach. But to me, um, I think the effort's been there with the guys that want to playing tough, no give up. You know, you put on the first half of a couple games, you're like, dang, like we, it's a totally different looking team, just the way we're attacking and the way we're playing. And then you know, turn on another game, like we, we're a step behind. So you got to do a great job as a coach and just, you know, coaching them and make sure they understand what's going on. Every team is different. Every coach is different. And every player is different. But uh, that's, you know, that's why we're here. You know, we're here for a reason to – to keep developing young men, and this is part of the process, and you got to stay in love with it, not just fall in love. And with TJ Sanders has stepped into the starting lineup a little bit the last couple of weeks, just what kind of jump has he yep. made from last year, and what do y'all like about mixing him with you know Boogie, especially yep. there? Uh, obviously, we love we love Tonka, we love Boogie, we love uh, TJ as well, and TJ had a monster game against Georgia, so you know we had to you know he had to go out there first, he earned that right. And it is, I do love having all three of those guys. I wish they all three can play. Uh, they can actually, but we're trying to keep developing depth and keeping our guys healthy and fresh is the main thing up front as the other guys are coming along to, as we get down this narrow road of the SEC. It gets tougher and more narrow as you get closer to November. So we're trying to keep our guys fresh and ready. But we love having TJ. Um, TJ has been a very active player since the day he got here. Um, you know, most coaches have favorite guys. You know, he, he's definitely high on the list. He loved putting apples on my desk and making sure that I'm, you know, happy about his play and stuff. So, you know, he, he put a he put a green apple on my desk yesterday. I like red apples. Is <laughs> <laughs> that a point off for TJ then? In terms of, nah, it's all yeah. good. He didn't really do it, but somebody yeah. put an apple on my desk yesterday. I don't know what's going on right here. <laughs> and Clayton, with Elijah Davis has played a lot more at the end position the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Just what was the decision to do that and kind of how would you evaluate the yeah. – the edge slash in position well, as setting the edge or getting out to pass. In the SEC, most offensive linemen are three twenty five and above, so you know that's that, that starts there. And then he's a little bit more. You'll see more of him, more of his athleticism when he's on the edge. And we just feel like he's he's more happy there. He's you know he had to take he had to take the knee braces off at practice, and you just notice him more there. He played some big in force in the Georgia game, and so we kind of just move him there um, permanently to you know to make us better. But uh, what I see from him is a guy who understands football, really good football awareness and IQ, and kind of a natural football player. I mean, his high school tape is one of my favorites still when I, when I first saw it. Obviously, their floor is a little different at quarterback now. And, and does that change anything with what they're able to do as far as their scheme, their yep. run game, or, or how is that? Have you yep. seen any changes that way from? No, their run game is obviously they are different at quarterback, but the guy they have in Mertz is a talented, experienced quarterback who's been around the block. Um, I think their offensive scheme is one of the, you know, every offense is different. I think they have a very, very complex, not complex, but a very hard offensive scheme to defend, and just because of the things they do and how they do it, and they make it hard on defenses in regards of checks and flows and motions and adjustments. So you got to be on point. And, you know, good football coaches with good football players. I mean, that's what you expect to see. It's sticking with Florida, it's kind of the opposite of Tennessee. They lead the SEC in time possession right now. Does that change how you have to kind of scheme at all or the way you have to go about your rotations when you know there's long possessions maybe coming? Uh, it does not change the way you scheme. You just have to, you know, obviously keep our guys locked in on situational football, you know, um, third and five, you know, be ready. For, you know, if, if they run it, I mean, they probably stand on the field trying to go forward on fourth down. Just alert our guys of those situations. Make sure we're playing smart football and understanding the clock and just the the overall game itself. Let, let's not get caught up in the you know the stuff outside of the situational stuff. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs>